Alright guys, so in last week's video, we showed a nice teleporter transition, how to accomplish all this stuff, getting your character moving from point A to point B, and then we had some nice little flare on it where you have this nice camera transition and a particle effect. So this week, we are going to be going over, this is basically like how to fake a elevator transition. So let's say we have an elevator here, and let's just imagine that one's up a whole a lot on another floor and we can just come in here press e and now we're magically over there but we'll call this floor two because it's two blocks this is floor one so if i come back in here to floor two press e now i'm back over to floor one and it's decently seamless the only issue is the lighting um so just make sure that your lighting matches on both floors and you're good to go Okay, so I am in the project that we made last week. Here's our old teleporter. And so if you're just joining us for this project, you are gonna need to be making a user interface. Um, if you don't know how to make an interface, go watch that video. I go over it in pretty good detail. Uh, if you do know how to make an interface, just make sure that we are passing an actor reference through. And I'm using the third person uh, blueprint to fire this off and I'll just quickly quickly show that so third person blueprint and here we go so we have an input action here use we get all overlapping actors when we find an overlapping actor that uses the interface we felt to try use and then we break that for each loop so that we're not trying to find more than just that one that is a insanely fast recap on how to make that um, remember just something that passes through the actor and then now we can jump into this and make ourselves our new teleporter so blueprint actor class is what we want and we want to get an actor I need to slow down my brain is melting <laughs> so I'm gonna name this BP underscore elevator underscore I'm gonna go do TP so we know like maybe if we have another version of this actual elevator um, you don't want to confuse them so this will be the teleport elevator i'm gonna open this up and i know in how in the example we had three walls a roof and a floor but in this one we're just for simplicity and time's sake we are going to just grab a static mesh and grab a shape cube cube there we go and we'll just make the floor so i'm gonna squish this down let's say zero point Five, yeah, that'll do. And multiply these two by three, the X and the Y. See how that looks in the world really fast. There we go, cool. Okay, and I'm just gonna change the material because I hate how bright that is. We'll just do like a nice little, little brick. All right, we have the brick elevator because you know those are very popular, popular elevators. All right, and so now we just need to add our Interface. So we're going to go to class settings here. We're going to go implement interfaces, click add, and look for our use interface. There it is. And that'll give us this new function over here under interfaces. We double click on that to add it. And then we get started. So, first thing we want to do is we want to promote this actor that's coming into a variable. I'm going to call this the actor to teleport. That way, we can just kind of keep a reference of what we're teleporting. Then I want to make a branch like this guy in. I'm going to right click on this, promote it as well. And this will be should teleport. Now, one of the good things about promoting it straight from the branch is that when you compile, you'll notice it's already set to true. Okay. And then as soon as we teleport, we want to set ourselves back to being false that we can't teleport. That way, if we have some sort of delay or particle effects or whatever that we want to make sure it gets played, or we also want to make sure that it doesn't go back and forth um, or whatever it is, this will help us delay that so that you can't just get back and forth really, really quick. All right. So after that, we do want to make sure that our actor, the teleport actually exists. So we're going to Bring it out we're going to do a git right click on it and convert that to a validated git i kind of flew through that really quick my bad but we're going to do it again really fast on another item but we're going to make a new variable for this item so this one's going to be the destination and this will be of type after okay 
and we're going to make this instant set level because we're going to grab this from the level. All right, so we pull this out, do a get. If you didn't know, you can hold control when pulling these out and it'll automatically do a get. If you want to set, you can hold alt and pull it out. There you go. All right, so once we have our get, we're going to right click convert to validated get. Plug this guy in, make sure that it also is validate, valid. And to go any further, we're actually going to need to make a function because basically what we need to do is find out the relative location of our player in in uh, reference to like the teleporter that we're on. So kind of show that really quick that we have these two teleporters, this one and this one, right? And we have our player here. If our player is standing on this corner of this teleporter, we want to make sure that when they teleport to this one, they are still standing on this corner. And the way that we do that is by using relative space, because when we normally would tell them to teleport to it, they, it would teleport them to zero, zero, zero of this thing. So they'd actually kind of be in the ground a little bit there. And depending on where the pivot is, right? Maybe like that. So let's say we wanted it to move like 40 on the X and 30 on the Y. Maybe 40, I don't know, I'm kind of guessing at these numbers, but um, we wanted it to move so far in these two directions to give us, oh, and then up, obviously, to let ourselves sit properly on this. Um, we need it to move so far in all these different directions so that we kind of have this offset. That's basically what we're doing is we're making an offset. Like, okay, how far from 000 is the player? Cool. Okay, let's now add that to this one over here because they are the same size. That is one of the caveats of this. They do need to be the same size. They also need to be facing the right, the, the same direction um, for making this. But normally elevators are stacked. They're not in different directions. So just know that <laughs> if you want, just have a door on either side. And then there you go. You can have it to where if it's in a different area, then the back door opens or something. Um, however you want to do it. That is basically the idea here is all we're doing is we're taking the relative position of the player in in reference to the first teleporter and we're just applying that to the second teleporter so that we know where the player should end up. All right. So in order to make that, we're going to go back into our got both my projects open. I didn't even realize. There we go. This is the right one. <laughs> um, we got both these open. So actually, you know what? I can just start pulling up notes. But anyways, um, we need to make a function. And I'm just going to call this convert to relative. OK. And go ahead and make this pure and I'll I'll show you guys kind of basically a pure will be whenever you can have a start node and a return node and they have nothing in between them as far as that would be breaking this line. If they have something like, let's say you're trying to say like set position or something, set, set play rate, sure. Um, this would not be able to be a peer because it needs to be able to execute guy in here. And we're not actually executing anything in here. We don't need it, um, but we do need some inputs. So we are going to grab a transform about this transform and then we're going to grab an actor object reference and call this actor because my naming is so unique and amazing and what we're going to do is we're going to take this this transform and we're going to get the inverse transform location and then we want to get the actor location And what this is basically doing is we're taking the transform of something and finding out where exactly an actor is on it and converting that to a relative location. And we're going to output that so that we know where to teleport to. All right. So back in our original graph, we want to grab our actor to teleport. And we want to say 
convert to relative. That'll be our actor. And then we will get the transform of the elevator that we're standing on currently. We get actor transform. And then we can just plug that in here. That will give us where we need to be teleporting to. Kinda. <laughs> It'll be giving us the offset, actually, is how I should say it. So yeah, think about it like this. This is the offset of the um that we're needing to apply to the destination actor or teleporter. Um so what we can do here is we can say get actor location. Actor location, there we go. And then we can just add these two together. And that will give us where we need to teleport to. So then we can just pull off here and we can just call the teleport function that Unreal has graciously given us. And we can plug in our destination location. And then we need our destination location. And that's actually going to be based off of the actor to teleport. We're just going to get their rotation. That way they maintain like let's say they're looking at the back wall of your elevator you want to make sure that they're still looking at the back wall of the elevator whenever they get teleported and then we need to find out who we're going to teleport so we can just copy paste this actor to teleport and plug that into the target at the very end we're going to hold alt drag this should teleport out and we're going to set this to true that way we can teleport now if you wanted some sort of delay or something like that you would put that right here this should work oh actually no it won't just thinking about it, the way that our uh, teleport works is we look for an overlap here, remember? Whenever we press E. So right now, we don't really have anything that we're going to be overlapping with because we're going to be standing on this. So we just need to add a box collision really quick. I'm just going to scale this up on its box extents on the X a little bit and on the Y a little bit. There we go. That should be good enough. You want to make that a little bit cleaner on yours go for it but you get the idea basically just need somewhere that we're going to be overlapping so that when we press e we know what we're overlapping with now one of the things i forgot to do also is we got to set our destination locations so we just select the one that we want to start with and then we go to the destination and then we come here select the side dropper click on that one and now these two elevators are linked so if we stand right here on this corner, we should be on the far corner over there. And you'll notice, let's look at the wall here. And so our rotation, we can test that too. The rotation is exactly the same. Maybe we want to go to this corner, or maybe, you know, maybe we just want to be in the center and we want to look at this wall. And you notice it's still the same we're in the center. We're facing this way. We can go pretty much anywhere we want on this thing and it's perfectly fine. Um, so. If you want like kind of a reference of how this might be used, you have these two elevators, maybe have like a floor in between them. Now you notice it's a huge change when the lighting changes, but just you don't have to worry about that in your own project, how your lighting is done. So when we press E, now we're up on this floor and we're good to go. So next week, we will be making a projectile uh, teleporter. So basically, if you guys have ever played Overwatch, um, oh, I can't I think of it. Sombra? Yeah. Sombra has a thing where she can throw out a little disc, it lands on something, and then she's able to teleport back to that point later on. So basically, we're going to be doing the same thing. We're going to be either A, using a projectile, or B, I might just have it to where it just, you just drop it right where you are. Either way, we might we might do both. Who knows? Uh, but the principle is the same, so we might go with the drop it wherever you are. Cause that's probably the, the simpler of the two. Um, I don't know. Uh, let me know in the comments below between now and next week if you want to see projectile or if you want to see um, just drop it where you are type of thing. And that'll be next week's teleporter. And then I actually don't have any more ideas on teleporters. Um, we could have one where you select UI and it tells you where to teleport. That's all I've got. <laughs> That's all I can think of at this point. If you guys have any suggestions on that, please put them in the comments below as well. See you next time.